Oh, he thinks I need to be mic'd. I talk so loud, my wife says, why don't you quiet down so much? Around home, with all, all our kids are gone now, so we're all, we live in a big house and it rattles and it's just, it's too loud, quiet down. Well, I tell people not to talk so fast because I don't hear as fast as I used to. <laughs> You'll know that too when you get to be my age. I'm 28 now, so. Sometimes I live like I'm older than that. Uh, <laughs> First of all, I want to thank Pastor and his wife for allowing me to stand by in this pulpit. That's an honor. I love your pastor so much. We have become so intimate with each other, he can almost read my mind when we looking at each other and discussing stuff. And his wife, she's got a special calling. She's a teacher. I, I like that because I'm a teacher. I had a prophetically told me one time at a Copeland meeting, this intercessory group of women, they come up. And this one gal that was ahead of this, these women, intercessors, she come up and stuck her finger right in my nose. She says, you're not a pastor, but you are a teacher. Amen. And she says, you have a pastor's heart. Well, that meant a lot to me, because I want to see people grow and glow. That's our motto. Amen. Jesus said, the glory of the Father you've given me, I've given them. Do you know you have Jesus' glory in you yes. right now, yes. waiting to escape? Yes. Don't keep it down. Let his glory shine through you. Yes. I wasn't going to start that way, but, I'll, you know, I'll, when you got the Holy Ghost, you better go with the Holy Ghost. Amen. My note says, intro, thank you, <laughs> prayer. So we're going to pray. If you have received the gift of tongues, I want you to pray with me. If you haven't gift to come, pray a scripture you know that you have revelation knowledge of God's absolute truth of that particular scripture. Because if you have that, it's yours. He, he told me something a long time ago that Pastor and I have talked about. Believe the word of God. Right. Confess it, yes. the word of God. Until. You heard me teach on intimacy the last time I was here. Intimacy with Jesus, and then he said, no, intimacy with all of us. The three-part God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. We're intimate with all of them. They're intimate with us. Yes. So believe and confess until you know. Now, K-N-O-W, if you look up the dictionary, it says intimacy, intimate. Know and possess. How many want to possess the Word of God and use it every day in your life? Amen. I'm up there. I used to be the other way. Amen. You ask me how I am, I'm a radical Christian. That's what I am. Amen. And I'm not ashamed of it. Jesus says, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you before the Father. So we're going to pray. If you have not... Like I said, if you, if you can pray in tongues, pray in tongues. If you can't, pray the revelation knowledge of the truth that you've got in English. But then someday you need to be filled with the Spirit because there's power in that that can manifest easier through you than if you don't have that. And God wants you to have it. Uh, this is a different beginning than I had anticipated at all, but God gives you gifts. He gives you the gift of salvation through his son Jesus. Right. The only part of the Godhead that became human flesh. You think about that? Sure. Just like us? I'm, I'm going to throw out a bunch of things here in the beginning that, that you should already know. Remember, every time you hear it, no, intimate. Intimate is the key. And it's not a sexual word. It's a matter of somebody knowing you and you knowing them. It, right. Like it was explained to me one time, he says, I become part of you and you become part of me. 
Now, if you're married and have a wife, you know more what that talks about than, than other people that haven't had that experience yet because that is the ultimate of the intimacy. My wife knows me better than any of you will, but not better than God. So we're in him with God. He created us. Oh, that's, here's another nugget. Do you realize God, Almighty God is the creator? When he creates something, he never destroys it. Now, that goes against some theology, but we'll let that live. He doesn't destroy. The devil does. The devil is the destroyer. Go back to the Old Testament. He's been destroyer from ever since he thought he was something great. Found out he wasn't. Now, here's another tidbit. And you hear people think this. God's almighty God, right? And he put the devil equal with him. He has never been equal with him. And he never will be. So why do you let him beat you up all the time? Because you're ignorant. Ignorance is nothing to be ashamed of. Because you know what? Ignorance you can overcome with knowledge. And you're going to get some knowledge this morning. I had a train of thought, and it just fell off the end, but it'll come back. It's his. It's his. Oh, this is another thing. i got to tell you. you. You didn't come to hear me. You came to hear the Word. And the Word is what you're going to hear. So now we're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I want the Holy Spirit to have his freedom and speak what you want spoken, Father, that they receive what you give them. And everybody here will receive something of the word that they can be blessed by. And I thank you, Father, for manifesting it and making this half hour be two hours. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of kings and Lord of lords, I call you blessed. You're, You're already blessed. I don't have to call you blessed. You're already blessed. I'll just reassure you that you're blessed. Now you need to learn how to live in the blessing. There it is. That's a struggle, I know. But as you get older, it'll become easier. And here's another little tidbit. You have the Holy Spirit in you. You're born again, right? Yes. Okay, that's my next question. How many of you can raise your hand up and say, I absolutely know without a doubt that I am a born-again Christian. Jesus is my Savior. Every hand in here should go up. If it doesn't, we need to pray for you and get you saved. I'm talking to the choir now. So now I know that when I say some of these scriptures, you're, you already know them. But we need to be reminded. Yes. And we need to be reminded until they become knowledge. Huh? Heart knowledge. revelation knowledge of God's absolute truth. Absolute truth. This Bible does not have one lie in it, even though it was, I don't know who published it, who printed it. There's no lies in it. You have a Bible? It's, abso- it's truth. But not everything in it is God's absolute truth. You want God's absolute truth. No variance, not a half truth, not a white lie covering it, you know, none of that garbage. Absolute truth. I learned that from a minister many, many years ago when he was talking about God's integrity of his word. See, I told you God's a creator. The devil never created anything. He only comes along to pollute stuff, distort stuff, confuse you. (laughs) How many of us have gone through that? Okay, I'm not through with my introduction yet, but that's the first part. (laughs) Time restraints. Oh, yeah. I wish I could just, no, I, we can't. I'm not going to wish that because it isn't going to happen anyway. <laughs> so don't waste your wishes on things you know aren't going to happen. Instead, put your faith that you have, which is abundant, on something you need and want that God's already said you can have. Amen. See, he's got, <laughs> Second Peter, he says, God has given you his divine nature. If we realized everything God gave us, we would be walking on air. We wouldn't be walking on the ground. That's right. 
says he's given us his divine nature, and he's given everything, everything that pertains to life and godliness. He's also given humanity the only one, the only creation he ever made. We're the exception. We are very, very unique. Each and every one of us. But yet, we're intimate with each other because we're part of the body of Christ. Oh, I got so much news. Time restraints explain handout. Handout? What handout? Okay, so we got it settled. Everybody in here is a born again Christian, right? right. Are all of you spirit filled praying tongues? Yeah. I won't ask you to raise your hand, but if you aren't, you, that should be one of your pursuits. Because that's another avenue of, of which the, the power of God can operate through you. I pray in tongues, just like Paul. He says, I pray in tongues more than y'all. He must have been Southerner. <laughs> <coughs> That's all, I love the Southerners. I learned a lot going down south. When we come back from those meetings down there, uh, if I would have said, honey, we're moving south. She said, okay, as soon as we get home, I'll start packing. She wanted to move south. That's where the word was being poured out. Well... I prayed about it to God. Like I said, we're all unique. Oh, yeah. I was coming back home, and I said, God, I'm, I'm coming back to Iowa. A spiritual desert. Mm. And it was. Yes. There were any churches like this then. Mm. There is now, and there's more. And there's going to be more. Yes. 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 He said, quit calling it a spiritual desert. Start calling it a blooming prairie. You know what blooming prairies do? They go to seed. You know what the seeds do? They grow more blooming prairie. Are you getting it? You're part of it. If you're, if you're willing and able to do it. God, we're the only creation he made also that, that has a free will. And, and it gets us into trouble every day. Because we're not all like Jesus yet. I'm speaking from experience, and I've had some. <laughs> and sometimes when, when God wants to correct you because you're going a little bit too far the wrong way, uh, it, it hurts a little. You, you got your whole life ahead, and you got, oh, man. But I'm glad it's you and not me. We, we did that, and, and I'm thankful for God, but we lived in a different generation. Yes. But you know, some of the younger generation that, that meet me, or think they do, they don't know me. But they don't want anything to do with you. The older generation, uh, what does the Bible say about milestones? What does it say? You come to a milestone, dig it up, dig, it, dig a big hole, and build a new one. Is that what it says? If I read my Bible correctly, and I see where it says in a milestone, which is talked about in the Old Testament, by the way, Says, don't destroy the milestones that God has created. The younger generation wants to tear them up and start over. Don't do it, young generation. It says here I got a handout for you, but I don't have the handout yet. But uh, I got to read this. It's a prophecy that God gave me years ago that is just as fitting today as it was then. Read the old prophecy. I can read this because it's big print. <laughs> the following was a prophetic word from the Lord given to Reverend Bob Butler at Grace Fellowship Church in Iowa City. Healing school on a Monday night October 6th, 2003. Now, I got to say this because I'm not a prophet, but I have prophesied. You will, too, if you get to a point where God can trust you to a certain level 
and we're all on a level. Then you'll prophesy. But when he did that with me, I could never remember what I said. Because it's God. It wasn't me. It's he's using me. I want to be used of God. You want to be used of God. And you know something? You are. And so are you. At some level, God's using you. This prophecy still holds true today. Your dad was there when this came about, by the way. It was a healing school on Monday nights. You say, well, what did it say? I am and the Holy Spirit are grieved at the convenience Christians. Christians in the body of Christ, so they were born again. They pray only when it's convenient for them. They witness only when it's convenient for them. They only praise and worship when it's convenient for them. They refuse to sacrifice their lusts of worldly things because that wouldn't be convenient for them. They refuse to do what I told them to do because that takes time and isn't convenient for them. But there's coming a time in the very near future. Remember, this was 2003. There's coming a time in the very near future when the convenient Christians will no longer be convenient. I'm not going to step on church theologies, but uh, just because you're saved don't mean you can't lose it. If, if that was true, then Jesus has to take those words out of Revelation when he said, I'm going to blot your name out of the book of life. See, your name is written in the book of life. We sang this song. Thank you for that song. Our name's written in the book of life. Your name's there right now if you're born again. But because of your free will, God won't go against your free will. I don't know if I can get this thing, keep this thing, I don't know. I'm different. God won't go against your free will, but, but you can exercise your free will against your salvation. Now, who would want to be that ridiculous? But people are. Now, I'm going to give you the scripture reverence for this to show you that this prophecy is right from the word of God. Exodus 3.14, God said, I am who I am and what I am and will be what I will be. So Jesus' last name is not Christ, which means the anointed one. So I could call you Christ, because you're anointed. Yeah. Now the world doesn't understand what an anointing means, but you should. Jesus' last name is I Am. Holy Spirit is part of the I Ams. Yes. You're part of the I Ams. Yes. I can prove it scripturally. Ephesians 4.38 says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. In other words, do not offend, vex, or sadden him. Yeah, he's a spirit. So are you. You ever had your spirit saddened because of what somebody or something that you weren't ready to handle happened? Yeah. Well, whom you were sealed or marked, branded as God's own. You did that when you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Now, maybe you haven't made Lord yet, but if he's your Savior, you're on the right track. I could throw this in there just, just because it's good. When you became born again, accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, when you did that, and it, and it was a quality decision, it wasn't one of these, well, I tried it and it didn't work. Well, that's all, these, you just tried it. You didn't make the quality decision. I'm waiting. Okay. It'll come up. Pray unceasingly. 
No, you say, well, I can't pray on CC. That means I wouldn't be doing anything else. I'd be just praying all the time. What that means is when the Holy Spirit moves on you to pray, and, and I always add this, when somebody's name comes to your mind, yeah. stop and pray for them. Amen. Yep. Now, it's not always convenient, but, it happens. but that don't make any difference to God. He says, what you're doing can take pause because I want you to pray for them because they need to hear from your prayer. Yeah. Right. And when you can pray in the Spirit, that's even better because you don't know, have to know what you're praying. Yeah. Right. Did you get that? My Spirit did. That's right. I don't know what I prayed for you, but he does. Amen. And he must have wanted you to know that right here and now. Amen. Now, sometime today or tomorrow or the next day, the Holy Spirit will bring up mine and tell you what he was talking about. Amen. And that's between you and him. He merely used you, used me, as someone, an avenue to get to somebody else. Amen. To bless them. Right. Maybe you needed, maybe somebody needed an uplift. I used to have guys call from WMF and I needed it. You know, you hit mm, down slope, yeah. and all of a sudden it leveled off and started back up mm -hmm. after you had your conversation. Yeah. See, that's when somebody's name comes to mind. Maybe you can't call them right away, but you can pray for them. Right. Yes. Yeah. Boy, it'll take the rest of the day just to do these. <laughs> the people draw near to me with their mouth, and their heart is far from me. No, wait a minute. The people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Yes. Unceasingly do they worship me. No. It says uselessly do they worship me. In other words, that kind of worship isn't his kind of worship. It's the kind he leads you to. It's the kind you dream up on your, I'll appease God today and I'll worship him. Don't waste your breath. Romans 8.13, if you live according to the dictates of your flesh, free will, you will surely die. <clears throat> but if through the power of the Holy Ghost you are habitually putting to death, making extinct or deadening the devil's deeds prompted by the, by the body or the flesh, you will really and genuinely live forever. Don't be a convenient Christian. If you have been, stop. Right. Every person is tempted when he's drawn away, enticed, baited by his own evil desires. Free will. Then the evil desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's fully mature, brings death. Okay, I've got to throw this one out. Okay, Lord. I'm an old sinner saved by grace. No, you're not. If you're an old sinner, you haven't been saved. And if you, and if you are an old sinner saved by grace, you're not an old sinner. You can't be both. And I'll show you some other scriptures to show you why. You are a spirit. First, number one. And most people don't know that. When, I mean, most cr traditional Christians don't realize that they are a spirit being. Yeah. They have a body, and, and they live in a body, flesh, and they have a soul. Yeah. Well, that's where we live, is in our soulish realm. Right. Right. And we need to get out of that and get into the spiritual realm right. once in a while. Yeah. Actually, more than, more than the other kind. Yeah. 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 If you're an old sinner saved by grace, you're one or the other, but you can't be both. Then don't try to be. Okay, this is about that. See, I only got two hours left. <laughs> Revelation 3, 15, 16. I know your record works and what you're doing. You're neither cold nor hot. I would rather that you be cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm, everybody take a lukewarm bath? No, no, I want it hot. Right. <sighs> 
if you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you or vomit you out of my mouth. As you are a Christian of your convenience, saying, God, when he speaks to you, do, a, do or say something like, later, God, put it off. I'll do that at a more convenient time for me. I must finish this other thing first. Are you at God's <clears throat> beck and call when he calls you to do something for him? Are you? Well, you know what they say about later, it never comes. Right. If you told God that, he, he just write it off. It's not, you're not going to do it. But the end will come, and will you still be saying, later, God? Hopefully, you will know what you're doing and saying the things that God wants you to do. So that prophecy... It's kind of stirring, and it can be condemning if you're one of the convenient Christians. Yeah. Okay, I read the old prophecy. You saw the scriptures, and it's already quarter after 11. You can turn that clock back. <laughs> and, and I need, I got something to do. Well, well here, here it comes. <clears throat> I got two points in this old message. All this other stuff was extra. I didn't plan on saying all that. God did. You must, somebody needed to hear it. Two points today. The first point is you. 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 Every you in here. First point is you. Born again, now what? We just started a series January of last year. God said, I want you to start ministering to the next generation. He said, they need to know what you already know and what you already know. So you're born again? Now what? Where do I go from here? When you're born again, that's the most, 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 most important decision you can ever make. Because that determines the way you're going to live the rest of your life if you subdue your own will and bow to his will and his leading and, and do it unceasingly. And I, I'll tell you, at my age, I know that's not easy to do because we have a lot of peers and others that influence us. I hope you're getting something out of this because I'm getting excited about it. I, I like this. And I want to see you like it. Because it, it's blessing. It blesses you, not just now, but from now on. Yeah. Be receptive. How many are born again? All of you. You said so. You and this body of Christ, your role in this group. You and the body of Christ, your role in this group. When, when you accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, you switched kingdoms. You realize there's only two kingdoms on this earth? God's kingdom and the devil's kingdom. Well, you were living in the devil's kingdom. That's why I said it's the most important decision you can make because you left that kingdom and came into God's kingdom. God's kingdom's better. At least it's been better for me. I would probably wouldn't be this old if I hadn't changed. In 1977, when I was 41 years old, I decided that that life was, had to stop. Because my wife says, if you don't get saved, you're going to hell. And yeah. well, when your wife tells you that, you better listen. Yeah. <laughs> so I argued with God. I said, all right, we'll, we'll check this out. I was 41 years old. I wasn't going to tell you all this, but it, it's my testimony, part of it. Testimonies help somebody else that's going through something maybe similar. So when she told me that, I, 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 got, I got upset. I got really upset. I went out the door and slammed the door and got in the car and went for a ride. I, I'm going to go talk to God. Okay. And I did. Amen. And he says, you're right and you're wrong. <laughs> you always like that good advice, don't you? You go to, you, you know you're, how your wife's going to answer you. And you go back and you get the answer and it wasn't at all what she thought it would be. <laughs> really exciting. Well, that's what happened to me. 
But I did get saved. Yes. I was 41 years old. And I got baptized in the Holy Spirit the next year in the fall. Well, we were at uh, Hagen's camp meeting. And my nephew happens to work, happened to work for him at that time. And uh, I told him what happened. He says, well, do you want to enlarge your language? Yeah. So he called a couple of the ushers, and all of us went downstairs to their counseling room. I need to be counseled. <laughs> Man alive, you talk about, if you guys are spirit-filled, if there's somebody next to you and they're not, Lay your hands on them and start praying for them. Get their permission first. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what they did with me, and my language just blossomed. And it's been growing ever since. And the more willing you are to pray that way, the more God likes it. He wants you all to be just like Jesus. That's why the intimacy, that's why the revelation knowledge. All of that. What is your role in this group? This is a growing church. In case you haven't figured it out, this is a growing church. This is a church that's unique to this area, upper Midwest. Remember when I told you earlier, you would come back, there wasn't any churches like this? And I wasn't a pastor, so I couldn't start one. But I could sure teach the word who, would, who anybody would listen. And we did. Get your reputation built up early. But... This church is going to grow, and you're, what's your part of it? Well, part two of my message today will tell you what part you are, because part two is also you. You and this body of Christ, your role in this group. Do you know what it is? Yeah, you come here on Sunday morning and whatever it has to have services. Come here and be blessed and go home happy. Was that, is that it? Well, that's part of it, and that's good, but that's not it. We'll get to it. Hopefully I won't run out of time. Are you willing or to just be in the body of Christ or join and be a member? Because you are a member. See, a lot of... Oh, I know a lot of traditional Christians. Not because I went around advertising them for them. They just, it just happened. <laughs> and over the years, it does happen. But you, you, you hear some of these dumb things that they say. Well, we need to pray for unity in the body of Christ. No, you don't. No, you don't need to pray for unity in the body of Christ. You're already unified. What you do need is wake up and figure out, hey, I'm unified with them guys because they're brand good Christians. Well, as unified, born-again Christians, you can change the... I don't know if I should say this or not. Well, it's out there. Go. Go <laughs> Politicians in the United States. Yeah. They need to get saved if they're not. Thank God there are a lot of them that are saved. Yeah. And trying to do what's right. And the, No, I'm not going there. God, that'll have to be another time. I'm not doing that now. I want to live another day or two. <laughs> foundational truths. I want you to, now we're going to, I'm going to read you some foundational truths, or you can read them with me. Go to John. First one's John 1. Now these, these scriptures I'm going to give you, you should, as a born-again Christian, they should be a part of you. Now, I mean that, seriously. You shouldn't have to say, well, let's see now. What does that, what does that really mean? John 1, 1 through 4. In the beginning. You had a beginning once. Your mom and dad just said, hey, I want a family. Well, begin one. And let's leave it at that. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Have you got that, all of you? Do you have to have interpretation for that? So God, Jesus, is the Word. He's always been the Word. He'll never be anything up but the Word. But that's not all. The same was in the beginning with God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You should have that. That's in uh, 2 Thessalonians 5.23. I think that's the right 
Is that first or second? No, it's second. All things were made by him. Aha. Jesus is also a creator. And since you're born again, Christian, you are also a creator. You see, a lot of people, boy, they'd balk at that. What do you mean I'm a creator? Well, we'll not pursue that rabbit. Don't have time. All things were made by him without, any, him, without him, not with anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Okay. The glory of God is also light. Jesus' prayer, John 17, verse 20 on out. Well, I don't know. It's pretty rich. I don't know if you can grab this one or not. Jesus told the Father in this prayer. Now, this is the, 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 this is the Lord. John 17 is the Lord's prayer, not the one that he gave his disciples. The tradition teaches. Because his kingdom has already come. It's in you. So we don't have to ask him to send it because that's here. What are we going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Hmm? Obey is number one. <laughs> That's a big step forward. Jesus, in John 17, was praying to the Father. He, in, in verse 20, I think he says, that, and I pray for, now prior to verse 20, just for explanation, Jesus was praying his prayer to the Father for his 12 disciples. Well, you're not one of the original 12 disciples, but you are a disciple. Look up the definition of the word to satisfy yourself that you're God's disciple. Okay. Then he goes on to say, and Father, the glory, this is going to shake up some people, the glory, Father, you've given me, I've given those people that have accepted me as Lord and Savior. So that scripture tells us that his, Jesus gave you the Shekinah glory that God himself had when they were in heaven together. Amen. Now that ought to blow your mind. You have it in you. Are you going to let it loose? Sure you are. After I get part point two, you're going to let it loose. <laughs> okay, but that's not all. The next verse down to the end of the chapter 17, he says, Father... You're in me, and I'm in you. And I'm praying, this is his prayer, remember, and I'm praying that we will be in them. So you have the total Godhead of Father, Son, Holy Ghost living in your temple. Uh, if, I'm, if he's going to live in my temple, I ain't going to smoke cigarettes. I ain't going to drink booze. I ain't going to do all this stuff that kills my temple. Now, I'm not telling you you can't do that stuff, because you can. You can go ahead and kill yourself and go to heaven early, maybe. <laughs> I'm not teaching, I'm trying, to, and I hope I'm not just preaching, because I want to come back someday. Okay, let's go to uh, 114. Now, this, this one, if you, this is another one you have, to, you have to really have the revelation of it. And the Word. Now, we'd already decided Jesus was the Word, right? Yes. So anytime you see the Word, this whole thing is the Word, so this whole thing is Jesus. I could go into communion now, but we'll not go that way. And the Word was made flesh. He had a physical body. Right. Only his daddy wasn't a human. And you can read it for yourself. His daddy was the Holy Ghost. The Father dedicated the, the, the Holy Ghost to go and father Jesus in Mary, who was a human being. See, the women have all the fun. They carry the eggs. Without them, the human race would stop. And without us, it'd stop too. And dwelt among us. He dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Glory is light. Well, I got a story I could tell you about glory, but uh, I'm not. We, I can't chase all these rabbits. We just don't have enough time. And you know, the time to God is now. 
He made time for us. I wish he hadn't. The glory of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace, oh, there's a word, and truth. Jesus is full of God's absolute truth. You want to know what God's absolute truth is? Read everything that Jesus said and did. Because he didn't do or say anything that wasn't from the Father. Now, if you try to slip something in there, the Holy Ghost will get you. Because he knows what Jesus said and did. In fact, Jesus himself told us. He says, I don't do anything except what my Father tells me to do. Right. Well, do we? Don't answer that. Because I already know the answer. Because I lived there. But he also said, I don't say anything except what the Father tells me to say. I know we're not there yet. But you can be. The, de the, the devil is totally negative, and there is absolutely no truth or positive in him. So why do we keep talking negative? Do you know here you're, who you're giving fuel to when you do that? Oh, I, I can't go there either. <sighs> it's tough sometimes. It's just... Just... Okay, John 3, this one is one that uh, should hit the heart of all of us. There was a man, a Pharisee, religious guy, named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. He was inquisitive. He wanted to know something. And said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Thank you. I hope I am too. For the no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, or truly, truly, I'll tell you, except a man be born again. This is not a religious term. It's not one the world created. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, smart man, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Well, absolutely not. You know how facetious that is. So Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say unto you, except a man be born of water, there's your flesh. What's it, what, do, what do they say your body is 97% water? Something like that. If you be born of water and of the Spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Yeah. You can't change kingdoms. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, water. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So you're not a new creation when you got born again. You're a new creature in an old creation. Right. Because when you get born again, your flesh is the same old flesh it lived in before. Except, when you get born again, the power of that old flesh nature has been taken away. So now your flesh can't come along and say, hey, you're going to do this today. And you say, huh, I'm not either. I'm not going to do that. That's not from God. You want to give me something to God will do, I'll do it. Turn the clock back, I'm running out of time. I can't, do, I wish we could do that. I got to get to point two. Otherwise, this whole thing is. Okay. <laughs> to eight. Oh, okay. I didn't finish that. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell where it cometh or where it goes, so everyone that is born of the Spirit. You cannot see the wind. You cannot see the Holy Ghost. But you can sure feel him. And sometimes you can feel him really strong. When I was praying about today, I felt him really strong. And I didn't hear him with his ears. I heard him with his ear. Your spiritual heart, you have a spiritual heart. Remember I said you're just like the spirit, soul, and body. Only, no, 
I'll just throw this out and tease you. You have three hearts. I taught on that one time down at Grace, and they still got it. I mean, I, we got it on cassette. And your dad, he come to me, and I said, never heard anybody teach that before. I said, because nobody ever did. <laughs> but it's scriptural. You have a spirit heart, and that's the real you. This flesh body you're living with the soul is going to die. It says so in here. But when it dies, you don't. You either go to heaven or you go to hell. Now, how many of your friends do you have that are not born again? Does anybody have any friends that are not saved? Oh, look at there. Wow. Do you realize that Iowa City is the most fertile area for the body of Christ to grow in in the state of Iowa? Enough said about that. <laughs> Romans 10, 10. I hope I can get fast enough to get through these. I have to quit watching my watch. Holy cow. Do you know there is such a thing as a holy cow? He's in India. <laughs> okay. 10, 10. For with the heart, remember I told you you had three hearts, the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The scripture saith, Whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. Yes. Shall not be ashamed. And that's as far, oh, I'm going 13. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon his name. Right. To get born again, you had to call upon his name. You can't go up there and read some prayer that somebody else recited to you and say, okay, recite this prayer after me. And you recite it and you say, okay, now what? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Because nothing happened. Amen. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Quality decision. Not something you do just at a whim or because somebody said, we want to get some souls. You know they don't save the souls. That's a misnomer. When you pray for somebody for salvation, well, we're, no, we'll get into that later, but you don't pray for souls. You don't pray for souls. You don't pray for salvation. Now that sounds anti-religious. It is. <laughs> you pray for the Lord to send harvesters into the harvest field and let them do the witnessing of what Jesus wants them to hear. Now I'm getting into point two. When you get to that point, now you become a harvester. It isn't become something you prayed about. What you need to pray about is, God, if you're going to use me to do that, give me divine appointments. Yes. 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 Then when you're not wasting your breath, when you come up to the guy, he says, and they're open to what you have to, oh boy. You're, they're open to what you got to tell them about Jesus. They'll listen to you. But there's something else that has to happen, too. Or, or sometimes that doesn't work. Okay, I got Jesus' prayer down here, and we already did that, so I'm going to skip that part. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Intimacy with the Godhead and you. That's important. That's one of your biggies. Yes. Revelation of God's absolute truth. A biggie. Yes. Anytime you have revelation of God's absolute truth, you have a truth to build on. And when you get born again, confess Jesus, that's your very first absolute truth. Yes. Because if it isn't, you didn't get born again. You're just spouting words. Uh-oh. Now I'll feel comfortable. There's a camera. Let's see, where was I? You are in Christ, must know. And Christ is in you. This, this is a standing that you have, that you got when you accepted Jesus as Savior. You became part of him, and he became part of you, along with the Holy Spirit and the Father. That's tough to, to get a hold of with your physical mind, Something like this could be, but it is. And when you get the revelation of it is, you will change. You'll be just like Jesus in that regard. 
Let's see, where was I? Okay. Born again, now what? That's the topic we have. The now what is the whole rest of your life. <coughs> Excuse me, I need to have a little water there. And you're going to do that. You might as well drag that out because that's next. I'm going to have to hurry and get that because we're running out of time. I'll tell you. I get dry throat and cough, and the doctor says, Quit talking. I said, I can't quit talking. It's part of my application. <clears throat> I quit talking. I might as well stay home. Okay. You can have a relationship without intimacy. God gave me this the other day when I was listening to some guy on TV, and he was talking about intimacy. And I looked at Mary and I said, he is wrong. You cannot have a relationship. You can have a relationship without intimacy. You can have a relationship. You have a relationship with everybody sitting around you right now, yes. Christian or not. Yes. But if you have intimacy with that with a person, then you have a relationship with that person. Yes. You see the difference? Yes. Relationship means. I'm connected to you. Hi, buddy. I haven't seen you for a while. But I'm not intimate with you. So I don't have any intimacy with him. Now, my wife could come up here. I'd say, here, here, honey. We're intimate. And I have a relationship with you. See the difference? We all have relationships. Some of them with the ungodly people that I can't stand. But I got a relationship with them. Because they're human. I think. Okay. Handout. When? Now. <laughs> Point two. Church growth. Your part. There they are. You want some help? Okay, here we go. This is a little mini book that we published years and years ago. And I'm going to tell you a story about this thing. I still have time to do that, don't I? Yes. Yeah. But let me explain before they get any of them. Uh, we printed this little book. It, it, it's not a tract. You know, we always used to give out tracts. Well, that's nice, but that's not this. This is a little book that tells you how, remember you raised your hand, you said, you know somebody that's not saved? Mm -hmm. Okay, you need one of these. Because it will tell you how to, how to deal with that. Because you realize those people that are not saved, their eyes are blinded, their spirits are blinded, they can't see the truth. They can't see the glory. They can't see the light. They have no comprehension of it. They can't. And that's part of what I'm going to talk about here, is, is how do you get rid of that? Okay, how many people have somebody that <coughs> is not saved? Excuse me. Is not saved. You want to get them saved? Yes. You want them to get into the kingdom? You want this church to grow? Yes. Where are they going to go to church if you get them saved? They're going to go somewhere else? No, they better not. Amen. <coughs> Cough drop time. That's feed on these things. I hate that. They get tired. <coughs> There's 25 in a buck packet. Now, how many? Are, okay, over. Raise your hand and keep it up for a minute. How many of you would like to have one of these books that you can read on your own and study it out and put it to work and watch the people get saved? But there's conditions to it, and the book explains it, but I'm going to give you a heads up on it. Is there anybody in here that is Spanish-speaking? you got some Spanish ones there. Same thing, just different language. There's a story behind that, and I'm not going to tell you now because I don't have time. I need more time. Don't eat that. <laughs> okay. Point two, church growth, your part. Total to tools to witness and win. And one I already mentioned to you, divine appointments. When you, when you have somebody that's not saved and you want to get them saved, 
Ask God to give you a divine appointment with them. And he's not going to give it to you until they're ready to hear you. Right. Maybe you realize or maybe you don't, but there's a lot of people in hell right now that shouldn't be there. Yes. Yes. And it's the Christian's fault, the body of Christ's fault, yep. because they didn't do anything for them. And they're going to, the people that could have are going to pay for that at the time of judgment. We'll not get into that. Don't have time to chase that rabbit either. If you want to know about judgment, you got to call and see if he can get me to come back. Or say, stay away, rock my boat too much. Pray to God in the spirit for wisdom and knowledge. You need to do that anyway. God says, I'll give you wisdom and knowledge freely, but you've got to ask me. And you say, well, you're not giving me very many scriptures. They're all scriptural. I just don't have time to do that now. If I had time to do it, if we was in a Bible study where you got a couple of months, I could go through and show you scriptures for every one of these to tell you this is what God wants to do. But we're running out of time. Look at, look at what's going to happen in the world. You're not running out of time? It's ready to implode. Pray to God. Okay, I already said divine appointments. Okay. Pray to God and intercede for the person that you want to witness to. Now, you don't pray for his salvation, like I tell you earlier. You pray for God to, let, to put somebody across that person's path that they will listen to, and God knows who they are. Maybe it isn't you. We, we turned our family off. We witnessed to them because we, we were so on fire for God. Everybody's going to get saved. <laughs> <coughs> Instead, we drove them away. So see, there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. Okay, now here's the big one. Ooh, I don't have a... Can I have another half hour? I could probably do justice with this for another half hour. Okay. When you look at that little book, and I got one here, there's one thing in here that you probably have never heard from the pulpit. Not in this church, but if you've been in some other church. Step two. Command. And don't tell me you don't know how to command. Amen. Command the unbeliever eyes to be open. Because they're blinded. The devil blinded them. It says so in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. The devil has been blinded the eyes of the unbelievers so they can't receive what God has for them. Well, the guy fooled himself because God has given the believer authority to take them, tear them off, of, cast them out. Amen. Now, the believers are to cast out or cast off the devil out of those people that are holding them in spiritual blindness. Now, I'm not going to go through all these because I don't have time, but you can read in here and it'll tell you step by step how to do the commanding. And all you guys know how to command. I wish, see, I'm old, and I have not heard the pulpit in most churches where we were ever teach one word on spiritual warfare. And I hate that word, spiritual warfare, because the war's over. Amen. Jesus defeated him. You don't have to defeat him. You just have to remind him that he's defeated. Amen. And that sometimes is a job. Especially if you've let him hang around for a while. Right. And sometimes he hangs around because you don't have the knowledge on how to change it. Right. Right. Don't ask God. Don't ask God. Take his devil's influence off of me. He won't. He said, I've given you the authority to do it. You do it. Yeah. Tell a dude where to go. Jesus, Jesus had it simple. He said, go. Yeah. Really? tough. You can do the same thing. You're just like Jesus. <coughs> oh, quit that. I'm going to have to quit talking, I guess. Maybe that's my show's all scene. No, I guess I've got ten minutes. I hope you get something out of this. 
because I come over here to give you something you can use. But the biggie with the little book, and, and you'll read the testimony in the back. Oh, I was going to tell you a story about that. <clears throat> After we'd printed this book, uh, we were at our minister's conference in Texas. No, we were in Louisiana then, weren't we? Yeah. And, and I had a hundred of these printed. I had to mail them right to me. My nephew did that, did that work. And I had a hundred of them, so I passed them out to guys. And uh, this one guy said, well, I said, take 15 minutes to read. He said, no, I can read it in 10. He must be a speed reader. I don't know. What do you get out of speed reading? Anyhow, uh, we were home one night, and 10 o'clock, getting ready to go to bed. 10 o'clock, phone rang. I pick up the phone. This gal from Mississippi was on the other end. She told me who she was. She says, I'm an evangelist. I've been traveling the lower part of the United States having meetings. And, oh, that's nice. I don't know you. You know, keep talking. So she says, uh, my meetings were growing like dead grass. Did dead grass grow? <laughs> she said, my meetings are growing like dead grass, and I want to know why. She says, I know I was called to God to do this, but I'm getting nowhere. Until. There's got to be an until. Until I found this little book in my possession, and I had not seen it before. And she said, I sat down and I read it. And then I read it again. And then I read it again. And she said, the fourth time I read it, I decided, I'm going to teach that. I'm going to preach that and see what happens. <coughs> and so she did. She started preaching and teaching it. She was an evangelist. She was doing the evangelist supposed to go. She's going out there with the world that, not at some church. Says, oh, come bless me. I'm an evangelist. I need money. No. Evangelists are supposed to be out there where they're at. And when you are out there evangelizing, you're where they're at. You probably won't get them to come here to get saved. Okay, so she was doing this. And she said, I was having success. My grass had turned green. It was growing. Good. Grass is supposed to grow. She said, uh, I got tired of people trying to steal my little book. She says, I was a minister. I said, I didn't even have my Bible there. All I had was that little book. And she says, everybody was trying to steal it from me. They wanted it. But she says, I got tired of that. So I decided to call the name and add the phone number on the back of the book, which was us. And she said, could I get some of those little books to have so people quit trying to steal my book? I said, yeah, how many do you need? She says, well, I don't know, but she says, I'm going to the Japanese convention over here in some southern state, and I need enough to take over there. I says, how about 100? Oh, that'd get a start. I said, I got one request. What's that? You don't sell them. She says, well, that's no problem. I said, they'll be in the mail. She told me what her address was and everything. Story's not over. So, about a month or two later, we got another phone call. It was the same gal. She told me who she was. What are you calling for now? More books? She said, Oh, yeah, I'd like to have more books. You got more books? I said, Well, we might have. She said, But I want to give you a report on that little book since I've been ministering it. She said, you would, I got hundreds of testimonies of how people got saved, people got healed, people got blessed. She says, on and on and on. All because I taught them that little book and they did it. So you do it and you'll see revealed. Now, not all of them are instantaneous. Some people are slow, you know. Some people just don't move very fast. But they will eventually. So that's the story, one story of the little book where it was put to work yeah. as it said in there. Now, some people says, well, I don't know how to command. Well, then read the rest of the little book and find out how to command. Because exactly. uh, it does tell you in there. Yeah. You might need to read the last half of the book more than the first half. Mm -hmm. Because the first half, you probably already got that. But you need the revelation knowledge of spiritual warfare. 
And, and I know the churches don't teach spiritual warfare, which is a sad, sad thing. Because God said that's the big point that's lacking in the body of Christ, the true body of Christ. No, the worldly bunch, they can't. The worldly Christian, the devil's counterfeit, they can't do it. It won't work because they don't have the power. They might say the words, but that won't do it. Not words alone. <laughs> okay. One more. This is one of three lists that I have. Lynette has one because she created it, and I have that one also. In Christ, I am. I'm a child of God. Romans 8, 16. I'm redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Psalm 107, verse 2. You don't have to write all these down because we have copies of these, but not with us. But if we ever come back again, I could bring some with. <laughs> forgiven. How many need to be forgiven? Some, some people can't forgive themselves. Right. I, I used to be that way. and My wife did get irritated when I was that way. I figured that's not a blessing. <laughs> Saved by grace through faith, Ephesians 2, 8. Oh, forgiven, Colossians 1, 13 and 14. Justified, Romans 5, 1. Sanctified, set aside and holy. I'll have to teach on that one sometime. 1 Corinthians 1, 30. And the reason I said that is because we have to give spiritual... sacrifices sometimes to get in line of where we need to be from where we are. Now, us older guys, you know, we, we let a lot of things slip and, and we don't stay up on top of stuff. And, and so consequently, God needs to shake our cage too. Uh, he shakes my cage. I don't like it, but he does it and that's good. If he shakes your cage, I hope you're getting blessed from it. Don't turn him off. Turn him on. A new creature not a new creation. That's mistaught. It's theology wrong. He only creates once. He created you once. He don't have to create you again. But you need to be a new creature in that creation. Redeemed from the... I had, a, I had fun talking to Tommy about that one. <laughs> we had some conversations about that very thing. Because a lot of the Bible say, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. No, you're not. Because the guy that wrote the Bible doesn't know. There's a lot of error in Bible because man put it there, not God. That's why we have to look for absolute truths when you read the Bible. And I don't, King James I like because I'm used to it, but I have a bunch of commentary Bibles. Beware. Commentary Bibles, even the guy that wrote the Bible, it's his, his opinion. And it's all right to read them, but don't take them as the gospel. Delivered from the power of darkness, Colossians 1.13. Led by the Spirit of God. <coughs> I still got time, so I'm going to, ooh, not much. We need, as born-again believers, need to develop ourselves, for ourselves, the still, small voice that comes to us individually, I mean, he, he comes to this group, but he comes to the group through somebody like me or somebody that's supposed to be leading the group. But he will come to you individually. And it took me a long time to, to really start to develop that still small voice when he wants to talk to me. Because mm -hmm. he used to call me up at 4 o'clock at night and wake me up and say, oh, I didn't 4 o'clock at night. <laughs> but now I've learned even alive and wide, way, you know, to listen to him. So you need to develop that still small voice. And some of you have already. But that's important. And then I'm going to stop here because that's led by, that's number 11, but this is 20 on here. And I got two more lists. So, uh, well, here's one of them. Who I am in Christ Jesus. Oh, man, there's more than 20 on that list. All scripturally proven out. Because we have been beat down and trodden over wrongly for so long we don't think we amount to much. Right. Wrong. Yep. Whoever told you that is the one that don't amount to much. Right. And he's trying to bring you to their level. Right. Yeah. One more thing and I'm done. You remember this little book? A lot of you haven't read it. Well, 
Bible school or church uh, school, uh, store at Muscatine went out of business, and she had some of our stock left over. So hallelujah, I got her stock back. Uh, so now I don't have just one, I've got more than one. And we've talked about reprinting it. But I got one for you better than that. You can go to the to our website. No, oh, it's in this one. No, it ain't in that one. That, that is one of the old ones. You can go to our website, pull up uh, the book, Great, and Mind, Great Good Seeds and Weed Seeds, and there's 39 half-hour programs on there that, it, that enlarge the five chapters that are in here. So you can get more out of that, but it means you're going to have to sit in front of your boob tube and watch that instead of Mickey Mouse, Quiet Duck, or some of them. And, and Oh, it is in that one. Yeah, good. It's not in this one. This is one of the older. We had this reprinted a couple times. And they, didn't all, they didn't all pick up. This, this one didn't have it because it was one of the original printings. Anyhow, uh, 12 o'clock, I'm done. <laughs> Best. <laughs>